Hey guys, this is Ron. This video is in response to a request that I got to uh, build the DSL uh, network, uh, kind of simulate the internet in Packet Tracer. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there's some concept in, in here that we haven't covered so far, but they're all CCNA level, so this will kind of give you a sneak peek. So we're going to do a grounds up. So here we go. We'll, we'll do the WAN emulation here. So this is going to kind of be our cloud, if you will. I'm going to go to config tab, DSL. We have modems 4 and 5, so we're going to add those. And all we're doing really is mapping that over to Ethernet 6. This is where our, e or our ISP is going to be connected. So if we come down here now to Ethernet 6, it's set for DSL. And that's the only thing that we're going to have to configure on that cloud. All right. So for the, the ISP side, we'll give them a 2811 router. We'll go ahead and do a straight through cable from fast ether zero to that ethernet six. Okay. Now we're going to have a server hanging off to the side here. So let's go ahead and drag it up. This is going to be our web server to kind of simulate the internet. It's going to be our DNS server, all that kind of good stuff. All right, let's go to the, to the ISP router and we'll start our configuration. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it off. I'm going to add a, uh, a switch port module and this is going to simulate or this is going to be you know our connection to the server this is going to be you know the internet basically anything out off of this switch port module is going to be the internet in our case okay so no I don't want to don't want to do that I'm going to do enable config T first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to configure that uh, that FA00 which is connected to the cloud so interface FA00 do IP address uh, we will give it 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1, 255 .0. okay no shut uh, no CDP uh, I think it's uh, enable so we don't want to broadcast out that CDP stuff out uh, from the internet basically or from our ISP uh, We'll do an exit host name. This is going to be our ISP router. All right. So the next thing we want to configure up is that uh, that switch port module uh, that's connected to our server. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a VLAN for uh, the devices that are going to hang off of that switch. So interface VLAN, we'll call it VLAN 10, uh, IP address 10.10. .10 10.1, 255, we'll just do a whole class C. Uh, now we'll do the actual switch port module. So if I do do show IP interface brief, we've got these addresses here. So the 1, 0 through 1, 15 is that switch port module. So we'll do an interface range FA uh, 1 slash 0 to 15. We'll do a... Uh, switch port access VLAN uh, I think I called it VLAN 10 alright so VLAN 10 comes up because there are ports assigned to it we'll do a no shut alright end so now we have our VLAN and we have our ports configured so we'll go ahead and connect up our server we'll do a straight through cable from our server to one of the fast Ethernet ports that we created all right. One of the things I'm going to do, I'll go back. If you notice, that interface stays orange because it's running spanning tree. So it's trying to figure out, am I connected to another switch? Well, it's never going to be connected to another switch. So interface range FA1 slash 0 to 15, uh, spanning tree, port fast. And right. All right, so now it's it goes straight green, and it's not going to do that negotiation. All right, so now we're to our server IP configuration. We're going to give it a static address of 10.10.10. Uh, we'll call this 10.2 because the VLAN is 1. 255.255.255.0. Default gateway 10.10.10.1. So that's our VLAN address. 10.10.10.2. So we are going to be the DNS server. All right. So if I go over to config, fast Ethernet, we just configured up 
uh, this as my IP address. We can go to settings here. We just configured also the gateway. We'll go to DNS. We're going to add uh, www.google.com. This is going to be 10.10.10.2, so it's going to be running off of this server. All right. If I go to HTTP, welcome to, just call this Google. All right. So that's all we really have to worry about on the server. Let's go back to our ISP router. What we're going to do is set up DHCP so that uh, when we connect in our DSL modems uh, and connect in our users, they can pull uh, DHCP from the ISP. So config T IP DHCP pool. We'll call this uh, Internet Users. Uh, we'll do a uh, well, we're going to want to assign it an IP address that falls in line with our FastEther00 interface. And that was 1.1.1.1. So we'll do network 1.1.1.0.255.255.0. Default router is 1.1.1.1. So that's the FA00 interface. We'll do a DNS server uh, to 10.10.10.2. Uh, exit. We'll do a uh, IP DHCP exclusion. All right. So typically, uh, I like to exclude everything that I definitely don't want to add out or don't want to dish out uh, to uh, another device. So I'll just do 1.1.1.1, which is the fast ether interface. So now that interface can never be dished out. All right. So end right. So we should be should be good uh, on our ISP router. So we'll come down here back to WAN emulation. We'll grab a DSL modem. Grab a DSL modem. We're only going to configure one side, but uh, let's see here. Let's go uh, connection. Should be one here for phone. There we go. Bam. So we've got uh, port zero phone. We're going to take this to modem four. Phone. Port zero. All right. Like I said, we're only going to configure one side. That's that's our phone connection. So now we're going to add another router. So this is your home router. We'll do a straight through cable. We'll go from fast ether 00 to the fast ether interface on our DSL modem. And we'll bring this up, turn it off. We'll do a ESW so this is another switch port module. So this is where our users are going to hang off of. I'll bring up a user. So I got a generic computer. I'm going to bring up and do a straight through connection from Fast Ethernet 0 to this Fast Ether uh, 000, which is on the switch port module. All right. So bring up the router again. Command line interface. Nope. Enable config T. All right, so interface FA00. So this is our connection into the DSL modem. IP uh, address DHCP, no shut. So what we should see is we green up. So we green up on this interface. And then in time, eventually, this will pull DHCP from our ISP. All right, so we'll do an exit host name. This is our home. router. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and configure up our switch port module. So, first things first, we're going to create a VLAN for our users. So, interface VLAN, uh, we'll just call this VLAN 20. Uh, we'll do IP address 192.168.0.1255255.0, another class C. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and configure up those interfaces on the switch port module uh, so interface range fa 0 slash 0 slash 0 to I think it's 3 we'll do uh, switch port access VLAN 20 alright so it didn't exist so it created so that's good uh, spanning tree port fast because we don't have a switch hook to this so I'm gonna turn that off so that the interface comes up right away 
and a no shot. So now, from here, uh, well, let, I'm jumping ahead. Now we're greened up on that connection. So bring up my router again. Exit. So I'm going to create a DHCP pool again for my users. So IP D8, DHCP pool users network 192.168.0.0.255.255.0. We're going to do a default router to 192.168.0.1. So we're just pointing to the VLAN. And we're going to do a uh, DNS server. And we're going to point that to the DNS server that we created. So 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 Alright, so that's what's going to get assigned uh, to those users. We'll do an exit, we'll do IP DHCP excluded address of 192.168.0.1. So this is the VLAN address. Alright, so now if we bring this up, psh, come to my desktop IP configuration, we're going to go DHCP. It's requesting it. Uh, an address and it was successful. So it pulled 192.168.0.2. It assigned 10.10.10.2 as our DNS server and our default gateway is the VLAN. So if I come in here, see the same information ping uh, 192.168.0.1. So this is our VLAN. So we can ping the VLAN. So that's good. Now let's see if we can ping the DNS server. And this should not work. Alright, so this doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because uh, the IS, ISP router doesn't know what uh, doesn't know what this address is, okay? It's it's never seen the 192.168 before. Okay. So what we're gonna do is on here, we're going to first create a uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a uh, access list. So we're gonna create an access list to basically find our VLAN. Uh, 20 that we created. So we'll do uh, access list. We're just going to do a number to access list or a standard access list in this case. I'll do another question mark for you. We're going to do a permit. This is the the uh, addresses we want to match. So 192.168.0.0. So this is the network. And now we're going to do wild cards. So 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.5 or er, correction 255. Now, if you don't understand where this comes from, watch my wildcard video. It explains it. Uh, and then we're going to hit enter. So now we've created an access list that matches our VLAN users. Uh, and the next thing we do is need to create a NAT pool to take our inside address, which is these 192 addresses, and map it to our outside address, which is what the, the ISP assigned us. So if we do a IP NAT pool... Uh, NAT pool correction NAT inside source list now this uh, number here is the access list that we created now we want to do it to interface FA00 zero zero. alright so we're mapping our inside addresses which is those 192's and mapping it to the fast ether address which is the 1.1.1. whatever the ISP assigned us okay now we need to tell the router what is an inside interface and what's an outside interface so in our case we'll do interface VLAN uh, 20 uh, IP NAT inside and then we'll do interface FA 0 slash 0 uh, we'll do an IP correction, yeah, IP NAT outside and right. So IP NAT translations. So we have no translations so far, but let's see what happens when this guy tries to ping 10.10.10.2 again. All right, so notice now we're hitting it. And one correction that I just realized in here in this last statement that I added and it may have added it by default is you typically want to put an uh, an overload at the end that way more than one person 
can be natted to this this uh, outside interface. So we'll do a do show run. It may have added it. Uh, show run. It may have added it by default on this one. Yeah. So it added overload there by default. But typically you want to actually uh, put that in there when you create your IP NAT statement. So now if we do a show IP NAT translation, IP NAT. Uh, translation. So notice here we've taken these inside local addresses and we've mapped them to these out or inside global addresses. So this is basically our outside interface. Uh, and then these, this is who we were trying to reach. Okay. So when this guy comes back to us, it's pointing to us at 1.1.1.2 port 10, and we're gonna go ahead and map that to 192.168.2 port 10. Okay. So now, since NAT is working, we should be able to get out to the internet. So www.google.com and bam, welcome to Google. So that's pretty much it. We would do uh, the same thing with uh, another uh, group of users out here. Uh, you would create that uh, connection. You would assign DHCP to that interface. You create a switch port module for your users put a VLAN on those switch ports. You're going to create an access list to identify that VLAN. Take that access list and place it into your NAT, uh, your NAT statement so that as they go out, the uh, uh, access list ends up matching them. So show access list. Notice uh, we have a bunch of matches. So when they, uh, when this access list pulled these up, these were, we basically matches because this matches my VLAN. Now if I had another VLAN at her floating and I didn't have an access list to it, they, they wouldn't be able to get out to the internet because I haven't uh, created an access list and I haven't created a, a, a NAT translation for them. But that's pretty much it, man. We did DHCP from our ISP that assigned that outside interface. We did NAT for our inside so that it mapped these addresses to that outside interface of 1.1. Uh, whatever it probably came up as 1.2. Show IP interface brief. Yeah, it came up as 1.1.2. So everything here got mapped to that 1.2 address. So when it goes out, the ISP router understands it and it hands it over to the uh, to the server. So I hope you uh, picked up something, found something useful in there. Let me know if uh, I breezed over something that you're not quite sure about, and I'll uh, try to get back with you and answer it. Thanks for watching.